stringysavvy.com, violin lesson number eight. In the last lesson, we talked about using different parts of the bow, as well as adding fingering to the mix. Today, we're going to talk about how to count eighth notes. If you remember from lesson two, we began counting one and two and three and four and. This allowed us to keep a steady beat, similar to hopping between jumps while skipping rope. The act of splitting up a beat like this is called subdivision. When we counted quarter notes, each note began on a number. So we would clap on the numbers. One and two and three and four and. When we count eighth notes, each note begins on both a number as well as an and. For each of these ands, we refer to them as the and of. For example, if we wanted to refer to the and immediately after beat one, we would call it the and of one. Try counting and clapping eighth notes. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... All right. Now we combine the counting of eighth notes and quarter notes. To make it easier, we're going to circle on the count whenever our bow moves. Look at number 66. When learning a new rhythm, it's good to be able to count and clap it, so you make sure you really understand the way the rhythm moves. So looking at number 66, the one we just circled and kind of learned where all our notes are, we're going to start our metronome and clap along. One, and two, and three, and four, and 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 one, and two, and three, and rest, and good. Now you can grab your violins. And we'll play along on the open D string. Ready? Three and four and one and two and 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 three and four and. You'll notice that number 67 is cleverly titled Pepperoni Pizza. They call this because it's an oral mnemonic device. Instead of counting one and two and three and four and, you can count or say pepperoni pizza to get the feel for how it, how it how it plays out, how it sounds. So let's try it with a metronome. And 67 is pretty simple, it's just a downward scale. The only thing that's different from before is the new rhythm we're playing. So ready? Pepperoni pizza. Another method of counting rhythms is using what's called the addition method. So instead of counting one and two and, um, we use different variations of speaking to help us understand and feel how a, no how, a, how a note lays out. So for instance, looking at number 68, instead of counting out loud, one and two and three and four and, we're actually going to count out using um, a full s uh, syllable for the quarter note. So it'll sound like this. One, two, and three, e, four, and. Once again, that helps us understand how long the note is laid out for. <clears throat> that way we're able to accurately play for a whole quarter note and not just part of it and cutting it off early. So using a metronome, let's count out loud number 68. 
four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three, four. Pretty simple. Same thing now with the D major scale. One, two, and three, four, and. Number 74 is a little bit different from what we've seen before. Uh, instead of being in 4-4 four, four for the time signature, this is in 2-4. The 2 tells us that there's 2 beats per measure, and the 4 tells us that a quarter note counts as 1 beat. Just like before when we had 4 uh, quarter notes per measure, now we have 2. So let's count number 74 together. So 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and and one and two 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 and now there's a certain reason why I really push for people to use metronomes right off the bat especially because a lot of kids or not kids but in general but a lot of people beginning when they first start off, they see quarter notes, okay, that's the notes I'm used to playing, and they see eighth notes, and they go, okay, eighth notes are faster. And so they'll go one, and two, and one, and two, and as fast as they can. And that obviously isn't uh, a consistent tempo. They're starting at one speed, and then they're all, and then they go slow again. So they aren't able to keep a steady tempo. That's why I advocate very strongly the use of a metronome, so you can keep that consistency. Alright, so I have a bit of a challenge for you guys on number 72. This one can be a little difficult for people who are new to counting rhythms. So, uh, to break this down, do what we did before with number 66. First, you'll circle what notes are being held out for however, much, however long, and then you'll start clapping and counting using that. So, for instance, beat 1, we have a quarter note. So you're going to circle the 1 and the and together. When you clap, it's just going to be one and, or one on. You're not going to clap on the end of one. However, with beat two, you have two eighth notes. So you'll circle the two and circle the and separately, and you'll count two and. Now, uh, what I'd like you to do is go through the whole song this way and learn how to count and clap it, and then be able to play with your instrument. Um, if you are brand new to counting, this is great for you. If you already play an instrument and you know how to count, um, this is great still anyways, but for people who haven't done this, feel free to post a comment on, on the page about how hard it is or how easy it is, as well as um, make a video. If you'd like to make a video and post it up, I'll gladly put it on, um, on this page to share with everybody your counting quest.